morning everybody how are you it is saturday december 18th 2021 this is episode what episode is this 2200 and wouldn't that be inc incredible 2000 228 my name is rachel welcome to this place this is wool and spinning we come here every week to talk about all things hand spun making with your hand spun using your hand spun knitting with your hand spun <laughs> and then also weaving and working towards weaving with our hand spun so we're sort of getting getting we're sort of on that on that path um that's sort of the long-term goal so how are you guys welcome to this place welcome everybody it is really good to see you this is our last episode of 2021 we will be taking a couple of week break just to rest and recoup and relax and plan for next year and then we will be back in early January. So um, this will be our last live stream. We actually kind of sad, I always miss it. I'm always like, oh, it'll be good to have the break and then I miss it. <laughs> I think that's Murphy's Law. Uh, welcome to new viewers. I hope that if you are watching the show for the first time that you find something here that is helpful, that is useful to you. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for checking out the show and please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And of course, welcome to our Patreon community. Our patrons are in the live chat this morning. They are chit-chatting away. As always, it is so good to see you guys. Thank you so much. We've got people from all over, um, all over the U.S. All uh, we've got Linnea from uh, Norway. I haven't seen you for a bit, Linnea. It's good to see you. Uh, Dagmar from Germany. <clears throat> we've got Eve from Cornwall in the U.K. And Amanda, who is in Sweden. She's originally an Aussie. It's good to see everybody. Thank you for being here. I have a lot to talk about today, so I think that we should just jump into the show. We will start with um, spinning for those who are like, that's why you're here is for the spinning content. We'll talk about spinning first and then we will get into the weaving content that I've been working on because that has been um, major, major project planning for the new year. After that, if we have time, because I am a bit concerned about how long the show will be, we will do community participation and that will finish off the show for the year. So I will see you guys on the other side. Alright, so let's talk about spinning first. I have all my stuff piled up here. I wanted to, I got really, really behind with my advent calendar this year. I just have not had time. Uh, yesterday I had hoped to get a few things done. Nothing even got touched. It's just kind of been one of those months where I feel like just nothing is, is sort of being accomplished. So I have been working my way through opening the Kingdom Fleece and Fiberworks Advent Calendar, but like I said, I haven't actually been spinning. I'm really hoping that over the next two weeks, I'll actually get a chance to do some spinning. I haven't had a chance to sit at my wheel, any of my wheels actually, and actually spin. All of them are calling to me and nothing is getting done. So this is week 3B. So that instead of having a little package to open every single day, um, Liz did it this year where you had a couple of packages to open every week, which I actually kind of liked. Um, it took some of the pressure off a little bit to actually have to do something every day. And so 3A I opened earlier this week and oh, this is pretty, this is 3B. So this is this past week, um, the color. I, I got the Christmas lights. Um, there was also Christmas brights. So I got the Christmas lights. And then the other one, we're also going to do 4A because this is for this coming week. So anybody who hasn't opened theirs, um, uh, please look away. <laughs> this is week 4A. So this technically is for like tomorrow or Monday. But we're going to open it a day early since I'm not spinning it anyways. I, I just am so far behind. Um, oh, this is beautiful. So that's that Moby purple color. I had thought about um, going through all of them and trying to 
sort of match them up so that I could spin them all together. But I think what I'm going to do instead is just spin them each. I've got two ounces, um, uh, two ounce bundles uh, because of how they were packaged. So two ounces can go onto the bobbin, another two ounces, ply them together. The other thing I was thinking about was spindle spinning them but then it'll never ever ever get done and the reason for that is because I have something else on my support spindles which I'll talk about in a minute and um, I'm just kind of torn as to what to do so this is all poly pay and I'm just sort of trying to figure out what I want to spin and what I want to make uh, before I really get into the spinning so that is my advent calendar now what have I been working on that has been taking up my time I made a goal for myself a couple of weeks ago that I would pull out my support spindles uh, every day um, for 15 minutes. So the um, so every night at bedtime, if I haven't done it, I sit for 15 minutes. It's only 15 minutes, and I support spindle spin. So I've been doing this for a week. I'm it's very new. I'm hoping that it doesn't go by the wayside, but so far it's been really really positive. So I have my box of support spindles here. And what I have been doing, it's very Christmas themed, if you can, if you can, um, as you can see. I actually originally got this box from Felicia years and years and years ago. And uh, it was one of those things that I just held on to. So I think you can see, I'll flip the cameras over here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Eve, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I told people to look away and then I announced the color. Um, so this is my goddess spindle from Mizpah. I love this spindle so much. I've actually had to consciously put it aside so that I spin on my other spindles because I, I've been spinning on this one so much. So I had just gotten this one. Sorry, the camera wants to focus on the stuff below. We'll talk about that stuff in a few minutes. And uh, what I have done and the reason why my support spindles are all taken up is because I took out my Cormo and actually I left it out of hand. Oh, maybe I didn't. I thought I left it out of arm's reach, but it is actually right here. Very smart Rachel, past Rachel, five minutes ago Rachel, put everything within reaching distance so that I wouldn't have to get up and walk away because I remember thinking, you're going to need this stuff for the podcast. You'd better put the bag right there next to where you're sitting. <laughs> um... Sometimes I, I, I'm very smart. So what I did was I took some of the, this was a Cormo fleece. Some of you will remember it. It was pin drafted. I had bought it originally from Sarah Elizabeth uh, Fiberworks and Sarah had this raw fleece. It was originally from Montana. It was a Cormo and I accidentally left it. I didn't process it right away. I didn't get it washed right away and um, I didn't know what to do with it and I was really bummed about it. It was actually in the Spinning Sheep Breeds workshop for School of Sweet Georgia because it's such a great uh, fleece to feature and to uh, spin. And I've been spinning it long draw on my wheel and I just haven't been making any progress. Spinning, uh, you know, a, a pound and a half of white fleece, it's incredibly bouncy, it's incredibly springy. There are a few places in the roving where there are some naps and whatnot. And, um, it, it's, it's beautifully soft. It's got a lot of potential, but spinning it on my wheels, I just, I felt like I was really fighting with the fiber. So this is sort of what it looks like up close and it, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautifully soft, but if I dropped it apart with my fingers here, you can sort of start to see that there's these, these sort of naps everywhere. So there's there, there's one there. It's nothing to do with Liz or how it was processed and stuff. I think it's just the fleece and how ultra fine it is. Um, and I mean, you can see it's just absolutely beautiful. Like, look at that. So this isn't a yarn that I would particularly want to use for weaving. It's bouncy. It's springy. It's going to be a beautiful, round, really um, light, airy three-ply. Well, the idea of spinning a three-ply on my wheels and sort of taking up a wheel for that project for, for quite a number of weeks and months just felt really overwhelming. And so I thought, well, how can I, and it was Dorothy that actually said, well, if it's not working, just change it, do something different. And I was like, yes, that's what I'm constantly telling people to do. Of course, why didn't I think of that? So that's what I've done. So I talked about this a little bit last week. I started pulling out my support spindles and because I had gotten some, I'd bought some new ones, I started playing with them. So 15 minutes a day, Whatever I get done is what I get done. And I've been skipping around. I've been doing a Diana Twist, 
who is um, just an incredible support spindler. She's been on this whole learning journey with support spindling, and I've been following it very closely, partly because she's a, a, a good friend. And um, I've been just, you know, and she, you know, she often talks about like just giving ourselves permission to play and to, you know, just, just enjoy the process of spinning. And so what I've been doing is just playing around. So each of these is about 15 minutes of spinning about um this was from last night and i it's funny because i'm finding i'm getting faster so Ange of rainbow rainbow Ange, and she's also she can be found on youtube as yarn and yarns um she's been on woolen spinning radio in november she talked about support spindling and she said you will get faster diana has said that you will get faster she they are absolutely right you really do get faster um so i've been pulling off from my little bag here and once this bag is empty i'll pull out some more and I'll fill it up again. Um, and then I'll pull out some more and I'll fill it up again. If it takes me all year, it'll take all year. That's, that's just what'll happen. So I've been undoing these little bundles that I have prepared for the, uh, teaching content for the school of sweet Georgia. And I've just been ripping them off. And then I've just been very gently going down the length and um, pre-drafting. I've been adding a little bit of a twist into the fiber just to keep it nice and organized and keep it um, you know, sort of together, if you will. I thought about loading it onto a distaff or something to keep it organized, but I'm finding because I'm still learning with the support spindling and I'm, I'm still kind of mastering, mastering all of it. I've been finding that it's just been easier to leave it, um, loose and just have it next to me on the bed. And then I can, I can spin and I get through what I get through in that 15 or 20 minutes. And some nights I've spun as much as like 20 or 30 minutes. And some nights I've only gotten the 15. It just kind of depends. Um, I will say I keep coming back to this new spindle that I just bought. It's from Bristol Cone. Um, I, I've been working on the little bats that were sent with the spindle. Um, Wild Hair Studio. It's just a one of a kind bat. These gorgeous reds. And there's some sparkle in there. Some Angelina. And um, what I have been doing... Where did my little bowl go? I just had it in my hand. Um, I've just been spindle spinning on it. Um, like it's just such a fast, lovely spindle. This is the pock spindle that he makes. And there's a part of me that kind of wants another one. I know I don't need any more spindles right now, but there are a couple of spindles from a couple of makers that I would love to, to sort of procure if you will. Um, and it's been really fun to sort of put the spindles through the, the paces a little bit and have, um, um, you know, have, have just that something to look forward to. I know I'm going to get some spinning in every day, even if it's just a little bit. Um, these two are from yarn spindles. Um, he's located in Maine. Lovely, lovely, uh, spindles, lovely spin on them. I'll just show you guys. And then I know there's some questions in the chat, so I'll definitely answer just lovely spin on this one this one's a wood tip um it's just just a lovely um lovely spindle beautiful um uh, woodwork there i love this one this one is uh, also from him it's a metal tip it has a slightly different feel it's not as heavy it's still heavier but it's not as heavy as the other one but again beautiful woodwork there and uh, it has that metal tip it's a little bit finer. I'm fully planning on going down here to wind um, the cop as I as I build up my cop up here. I just started here. I just wanted to see kind of what would happen. Um, both of these spindles are have a slightly thicker uh, shaft. So when you flick, I feel like I have something to grab onto and I have something to flick. Um, I really, really, really like those. This is my Silly Salmon. I love this spindle. It's just beautiful. Um, this one is from Bullchuck Arts. This is actually the spindle bowl that goes with it. It's a set. This is the size medium and it has a very pointy uh, tip there. So just be careful if you're, if you're around kids. This is a Tibetan from uh, um, Nitty Naughty UK. I have two of these. I absolutely love them. When I first got them, I don't think I really truly appreciated them um, because I didn't know what I was doing and I was struggling quite a bit. And I had done the workshop through School of Sweet Georgia on um, support spindling with uh, Debbie Held. And I just 
still didn't feel like I was really up and off and on, on, on to, off to the races. I'm not really sure what it was that helped me to get it to click exactly. I think it was just Diana showing photos, uh, other people posting photos in the spindle spun summer posts and just deciding that I was going to do it. Um, and just deciding that I was just going to stick with it until I could make yarn. <laughs> and uh, over time, it just it just clicked. And then this is a goddess spindle from Mid Mizpah. I love this spindle. Same thing though, same as same as the yarn spindles. The shaft is a little bit thicker, so I feel like I have something to push on to flick. And it's not it doesn't strain my finger quite as much. So I am finding that with my finer tip spindles. So this one is. Um, Woodland Handcrafts, the shaft is quite fine and it's quite tall and quite long and it's got a beautiful spin on it, but I do find it's a little bit harder on my thumb. Um, so just, just some things that I'm learning as I, as I figure it out. I do love my Russian spindles, I will say. I'm loving these Pong spindles, these Pong style spindles. Um, they, uh, they're, they're, there's something to those spindles. I love them. So there's a couple of questions in the chat. So let me just um, catch up. Uh, Jennifer says, what a collection. You could do a six ply. I totally could, Jennifer. Absolutely. Zan, you are totally right. That Cormo is extremely white, which I think is part of the reason why I wasn't enjoying spinning it on the wheel. It's just like staring at like white, 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 white. Not my favorite. Um, as you build speed, do you notice your, about what do you notice about your consistency? Great question, Jennifer. It's funny. Um, it's funny that you would ask that because last night I was finding as I was spinning along that I was going faster, um, more, but, but be, in that faster spin, I was finding that I was more consistent because I was, I I'm getting, I'm starting to get the hang of how to hold the fiber, where to hold the fiber, um, what I want the fiber to look like as I'm drafting. And um, I don't know if I can show this very well. I wonder if I can sort of just put the camera, if you guys, if this works and you guys can see. So as I, so I'm just gonna join it here. I'll just work on the spindle that I was working on last night. This is why we might not get to community participation today. So I've been creating a triangle here with the fiber. So I put my thumb um, into the fiber and I've kind of got my, my pointer finger and my, and my middle finger sort of helping to hold the fiber out. And that way, if I, dra if I draft, okay, that didn't work. I was trying to go slow. My join is not very good here because I'm talking. So just give me a sec here to join and I'll, you guys can chit chat in the chat. I like to leave a bit more of a fuzzy bit at the end of what I was working on before. So I'll try, I'll try to leave like a chunk of fiber um, before I join so that when I come back to it the next day, it's really easy to join the next bit of fiber. But I can see that I didn't because it was uh, getting, getting a bit late. So I'm just going to get past that join. <clears throat> so as I'm holding the fiber... Um, and I've been really trying hard not to worry too much about thick and thin. I've been really trying hard just to keep my drafting really consistent. So twist, add some twist, draft back. And I've been trying to draft back the same distance every time so that as I'm drafting, I'm drafting the same number of fibers every time. So I've been drafting back the same distance. And that's, I think, what will get faster is as I'm going, I'm talking while I'm doing this, but like last night, it was really fast. And you start to kind of feel the twist and how much you can pull back. I know I'm going out of the camera here a little bit, but uh, it's actually quite difficult to demo support spindling because you're doing long draw. So you're drafting across. I know Ange is a floor dweller and she sits on the floor and does this. I've actually found sitting in bed is really quite lovely. It's hard to support, to, to suspended spindle spin in bed. Um, cause you kind of have to go down off the side of the bed, but, uh, and then you butterfly, but, um, support spindling, you can put the spindle kind of next to you on the bed and then work across your body 
and it's uh, worked quite well. See, my join wasn't very good. So what I've, what I've been doing when my joins aren't great, because I'm learning, right? Like I'm just, I'm trying to be really, really, really kind to myself, is I just take the other end and I lay it on top and I keep, I keep winding my cop. And the reason for that is because I'm just learning. I just, I'm in the role of learner. So that join wasn't good enough. It didn't work. So I will do something different next time and try a different way of, of joining. And sometimes it gets really thin. It gets like cobweb thin and it's just not quite the right um, it was just a little bit too much twist or it just wasn't enough fiber. And so then I just, you know, let it go and just note it for next time. But I have found I'm talking and so the yarn is sort of, it's hard to spin really consistently when, when you're, when you're talking. But, um, I have found that as I've, as I've sped up, my yarns become more and more, um, consistent. <clears throat> I want to love spindle spinning, but it just hasn't happened. That was me, Zan. It took me a long time to really embrace spindle spinning. I think it just took, it just took some, some time. Welcome Kelly. Um, yeah, no, no, uh, no stream next week because of Christmas. Um, all right. Yes, Diane, somebody said they made an advent calendar for their own use last year and then they opened it this year and everything was a surprise. I love that idea. It may do the same thing for next year's opening surprise. I think I'm going to do the same. Um, that was in the maker morning. Somebody, I can't remember who it was. Oh, sorry. I've got hair in my eyes. Um, somebody said that they had done that and I thought that was just brilliant. Um, what else? Ch -ch -ch -ch. Silicone needle tips make great protection for sharp spindle points. That's a great idea, Diane. Thank you. I was also thinking um, cork would work really well if you had a, a piece of cork. You could stick a cork in this because um, it's pretty sharp. And uh, I wouldn't, it's kind of like our, um, the tines on our hackles and our combs and whatnot. You just want to be careful. Um, very helpful to see this live. Yes, long draft. You are truly keeping this thing going different for, on a draft spindle. Absolutely, Jennifer. Yes, you nailed it. Yeah. Um, oh, Diane, what a great idea for a guild activity. Um, so if you made advent calendars, you could trade them around and then it would truly be a surprise. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Yeah, it was in Maker Morning. Yeah, yeah, it was. I remember that too. Okay, we need to move along because um, we'll sit here all day and talk about spindles. And um, I'm really hoping, my hope for you my hope for you. Uh, we use that language at work a lot. Um, you know, I wish that we, um, it, we use it a lot with, um, with, um, end of life and really terrible situations. We'll say, um, I'm sure, actually, I'm sure some of you are, are, um, uh, aware of some of the language, um, just because of your jobs and what you guys do, you know, um, we'll say something along the lines of, you know, I, I re I wish we weren't in this situation. Um, I, I worry that if we don't talk about this, that things are going to get worse. And, um, my hope for you or my wish for you is that we can have an open conversation and get through this. So we'll use that, that language and that way of speaking quite often. And, um, particularly in hospice. And, uh, I, I was thinking about this earlier this week cause it, it doesn't sound like it really, it's like, why are you telling us about that, Rach? The reason is because my hope, so I, I really worried, um, for a long time that I would never find that joy in spindles that, um, I looked, I watched my friend Kim, I watched Diana, I watched Katrina. They just love spindles. And I really worried that I would never kind of find my, my groove with them. And I have come to really love them. And I'm excited about that time every day. And I've carved it out every, every day this week. So my goal is to finish that Cormo spin in 2022. That's that I'm just going to work on it all year. So you guys are going to get sick of hearing about it. And my wish for you guys is that you continue to find that love in spindles as well. And I think it is a process and I think it does take time. And that's why we switched our spindle spun summer into spindle spun stitches so that we could continue celebrating spindles, working with our spindles, and then also pivoting into projects on spindles. And what I'm hoping to do is we always have our zero to hero every year that goes on, starts in January. I just clean up the thread and start a new one for the year. I think what we'll do is we'll also start a thread in January when I'm working on the Ravelry group in the next couple of weeks. So you'll see this stuff popping up. Um, we'll start one that's for spindle spun stitches that's specifically for people working on 
with yarns that are spindle spun. And I have to admit, one of my dreams would be to work on a weaving project out of my spindle spun yarns. I think that would just be above and beyond. So yeah, you guys are chatting about um, uh, some of the uh, uh, spindles and stuff that you've bought over the years. Um, I know, um, yeah, the Orenburg, um, Russia, the uh, Galena's video on interweave. That's a really great video for people who want to watch and, um, and do things. Yeah. All right. Let's pivot into some other things so that I can, so that we can sort of somewhat, um, end the show on time. Um, cause we've got queries and explorations today. So I wanted to share with you some project planning, but first I thought I would share with you, um, wait, hang on. Uh, I would share with you a finished woven project that I've got. So I, um, so this is, this is two, eight cotton. I'll just move this out of the way. These are two, eight cotton. There's only five of them here only. There's three more that need to be machine stitched. Um, they came out, these are my candy cane towels that I was working on. So this is natural, uh, the natural color of two, eight cotton. And then I used red and sort of a limey green. This, I have written up the draft it is going to be available um, to patrons, excuse me, sorry, uh, to patrons uh, coming up, I think in the next couple of days. Now, this is not a part of the pattern. This was a mistake that I made, and now it's all I see when I look at these towels. I made a threading error in the twill, and it's right in the middle, and thankfully nobody will notice. It'll only be me um, when, just because of the people who are getting these. Um, they're not the kind of people who will notice, but, um, I was really disappointed when I found it uh, yesterday morning. I was I was hemming them and I was pinning them because I have to have two done for tomorrow to gift to my brother and sister-in-law. And I saw it and I just, my heart sank. So it's just one threading error, but it's just enough to throw that twill off. Thankfully from a distance, this is the small camera. <clears throat> so even on the big camera, like you can't see. I can because I know where to look. But um, I was just really bummed. Um, I thought I had been really careful. I wove, you know, five yards of fabric and I thought that I had it all. I thought it was fine. I looked at it several times. I went through every, every candy cane and I must have just missed it. And I think sometimes it is hard to see stuff on the loom, but they're beautiful. They turned into kind of more like fingertip towels. So towels that you would maybe put in the bathroom, um, for, you know, when, when you're having guests over and they just need to, to dry their fingers. Um, but they're turned out really beautifully and, um, I've got eight in total. And then, uh, at the end of the warp, I ended up with uh, a little square. And uh, it was slightly rectangle. So I actually hemmed that and I put it in the center of our kitchen table. So it's actually really pretty. Nora was like, this is really pretty, bummy. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. Put some red candles on them and it just looks really pretty. So yeah, the towels are beautiful. Don't sweat the threading error. Thank you, Dorothy. I appreciate that. I was just bummed, right? Like you go through all that weaving and it would have been a really quick fix if I had found it when I was weaving at the beginning, cause I could have just moved the heddle, right? Like I could have just tied a temporary heddle and fixed it. It's just, anyways, I know you guys get it. So, uh, yeah, so these turned out really well. I wound a five, just over a five yard warp. It was about 5.4 yards and I got eight towels plus the little, um, thing for on the table. And I used two cones of the natural. I've got about half of a cone left tube. And then one tube of red and one tube of lime. So, and you don't have to do this in Christmas colors and they certainly don't need to be candy cane and they certainly don't need to. Um, what I really love about this pattern is it gives like this undul undulating kind of effect. Um, so it, because of the way that the twill works, um, it, it looks like it's undulating, which I think is really, really, really pretty. And, uh, but you don't have to do it in red and green. I mean, you could do it in like your favorite colors. My brother and sister-in-law, their kitchen is a uh, grayish tealy blue on the bottom, the bottom cabinets. And then the top cabinets are like a vanilla. And so I thought it would actually be really pretty. You could have that dark tealy gray blue in where the red is. And then their accent in their kitchen is gold. So you could make, you could get a dark, dark gold that would actually contrast against the vanilla. Cause you'd have to be careful about that, that it wouldn't blend in too much. And you could do gold. So whatever somebody's kitchen colors are, you could totally substitute. They don't have to be just candy cane. And then it's just straight twill, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, twill tie up. So one, two, two, three, three, four, four, one. And then you're just treadling one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's all a 
that same vanilla weft. So um, you're just, you know, changing shuttles whenever you run out of yarn, like super, super simple. So yeah, thanks, Megan. No one will notice but you. Thank you so much. Um, um, this size of towel, Dagmar, you're actually quite, quite, that's true, actually. This size of towel is really nice for doing dishes. Um, they're just like the perfect size. And my dad used to fold them in half like this, and he'd throw it over his shoulder like this, and he'd have it right there, and he would dry so he always liked to have a slightly smaller tea towel. The other thing you can do, and I was playing around with this last night, and these are pressed now for gifting, but um, if you folded it into thirds and then hung it, it's actually, it's really pretty. And you only see the candy cane, which is just really lovely. But they're, you know, they're a bit small. I did hem them a bit short just to get eight off of. I could have, I could have made them longer, but um, I wouldn't have had the eight. So I wanted to keep two. And I've got two for Patrick and Katie, and um, I don't know what I'll do. I, I think I know what I'm going to do with the other four. I think they'll go to the girls in the cul-de-sac, but we'll we'll just see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so that is that. All right, let's talk um, about one of the other projects I've been working on this week, because my mom doesn't watch the podcast, so I can share it with you. This is for my mom for Christmas. So no, it's not done. Um, there was a delay in getting the yarn because of uh, the flooding here. And, and now we have snow on the ground. Um, what was the weaving width in loom? It was only 16 inches, Dana. Um, it's only 338 ends set at 22 ends per inch. So pretty small. So you could do this on a table loom. Um, so this is another Cat Bells cardigan. Um, it's for my mom. I am following the size medium because even though my mom should have a size small because this sweater has so much positive ease in it, um, she likes her stuff a little bit more uh, loose and a little bit more um, forgiving than me. I wear my, my clothing a tiny bit with a little bit less positive ease than my mom does. And uh, I had showed this to you guys last week, so I've made good progress on the body. I'm, I'm getting there. And uh, it won't be done for, for next Saturday, but I'll probably be able to get quite a bit further down on the body. The kids have tutoring on Thursday morning again, so that's a full hour of knitting while we're sitting and waiting. And they have a play date on that same afternoon, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a little bit more done. Um, and yeah, I'll just keep trucking along on it. So far, I haven't worked on it in front of her. So she doesn't know, she hasn't seen it. And then I also have a gift certificate for her for a workshop for the guild that we're offering in March. So I'm hoping that she'll enjoy that and that she'll be able to go to that. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's coming along. Um, I'm on the second ball of yarn. This is the Northampton by Valley Yarns. It's just black worsted. It's nothing special. It's just a workhorse yarn. It'll be perfect for what my, what my mom sort of does and wears and, and so on and so forth. So that is that. So I don't know, I don't think it'll be done, but I have made some progress. Yes, thank you, Dorothy. That makes me feel better. I have made progress, yes, because I had just separated for the sleeves last week, I think. So I've done about 10, 10 or 11 inches of, of knitting, I think, but the body is 22 inches long. Thankfully, my mom is the same height as me, and if I make it any longer, like 24, 25 inches, like the pattern calls for, it's just too long for her. So for mine went down to 20 two inches so I'm going to do the same on hers because otherwise it's just too long for her so that is that now if you guys follow um the school of sweet Georgia uh you will know that um Felicia has just posted the four shaft weaving uh pattern uh the weaving the four shaft uh tw twill gamp and I've done twill gaps in the past but um I bought yarn for it I, wa I wanted to get a smooth yarn I wanted to work with a yarn that I had never worked with before so that I would be able to learn about a new yarn. This is a 50-50 merino silk. It's Jaeger spun for those who haven't seen or heard of this yarn. And um, I only needed one skein of each based on the yardage. And um, what I'm going to do is whatever's left over uh, after I do my gamp is uh, I'll be able to reconstruct and deconstruct the yarn and then I'll be able to... Um, um, reproduce it myself and spin it myself. It's a lace weight. It's incredibly fine. It's beautiful. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'll set it at yet. Um, 
I think I had read somewhere that it, it does really well between 22 and 24 ends, I think, if my memory serves. I might be wrong about that. I chose Juniper, Copper, and Vanilla. So the vanilla will be placed between, for anybody who hasn't seen the twill gamp, it's basically four panels of twill. Um, there's a straight draw twill, so just like a regular uh, twill. Um, there's a, I'm going to forget actually, I was just reading it last night. I'm killing two birds with one stone with this because this is actually going to be for my GCW, my Canadian Guild, my Guild of Canadian Weavers, my tool gap for that. So I thought, well, I can kill two birds with one stone and kind of do two things. So I was reading the, um, uh, the uh, what's needed for the GCW. Um, and so I need a smooth yarn and um, I have to choose my fourth twill and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to choose yet. Um, I know on the School of Sweet Georgia, they did Rose Path for the fourth uh, twill pattern. I was, I originally wanted to do like an undulating twill, something like that, but I'm not sure if that'll work for the twill gamp. So I have to just sort of work out the, graph it all out, figure out what I want to do. But the copper will be the picks in between the juniper and the um, vanilla. So that'll that'll create the columns of the of the twill gamp. And if you guys haven't seen this and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link to it in the show notes after the show and I'll, I'll, I'll put it all up for you guys so that you can see. And I ordered from a new shop that Loreline had uh, recommended. Super fast shipping, even with our floods. It was only a couple of days late. It was uh, T Tise Fee. And uh, Catherine wrote a really lovely note on the back, which was really lovely, and and uh, it was it was great. So that is for the twill gamp. The other project that I've got, I had ordered this yarn a while ago, but unfortunately it got delayed because of the floods. You guys are probably seeing a uh, a, a theme here. Um, actually, the reason somebody said Zan said the copper and the teal fave colors says Jenny. The reason why I chose these is because they're a split complement to each other. So it's orange and blue as the complement. And then you've got this copper and this teal. And it just gives you that split complement. I thought it was just so pleasing. How, but also it'll give me the contrast that I need between the panels. Um, it feels very luxurious to be using a yarn like this for the gamp but I'll learn so much. So I thought, you know, I'm killing a lot of birds with one stone by doing that. Um, so it's part of the learning process and it's part of just what the year has in store for me. This is Briggs and Little Sport. This is the yarn that I have been working on and using for my, um, for my OHS unit one. And, um, my OHS unit one is here and I thought I would show it to you guys. My binder is almost put together. I ran out of ink for um, printing off the remaining p pages that I needed for my, for my binder. So this is what it looks like. I'll show it to you guys really quickly. It's a four inch binder. These are all of my samples that I have woven. I've been working on this since August. Um, this is unit one basic weaves and I have to reprint this because this is when I ran out of ink. Um, this is my table of contents and this is all my stuff that I haven't put in yet because of course the printer and then it comes into, so this is my, my warp specification sheet will go here. And then this is where the unit leader will have to turn the binder, uh, landscape from portrait to view the rest of the binder. So this is, um, all of my stuff. So it's going to be hard to show you guys in landscape, but basically this is my warp specification, my weft specification sheet. And then these are all of my samples and it goes all the way through. So that's my plain weave sample. This is my plain weave with stripe. And it tells you in the thing exactly what you need to do and all the stuff that you need to do. Um, and it just goes on and on and on. So we're getting stuck because of the uh, camera. So basket weave. And then it goes into basket rib. I won't show you guys all of this. And then uh, into the twills. So this was where I started to think, hmm, I wonder if I could use one of the twills, um, either um, one of the twills to sort of start to build out what I want to do for my fourth panel um, on my twill gap. So this is uh, two, two, twill, just straight draw, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is on a broken twill threading. So this is broken twill threading. So one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three. But then 
this is treadled as a two, two, twill. So it's treadled as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you get this beautiful effect. And then this is a point twill threading. So one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, and then uh, two, three, one. So you can see the draw down here. So the threading is two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, and so on. And you get, and then when you treadle one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you get this which is just beautiful. I did not use floating selvages. Um, I started so that my, on my right hand side, it was a little bit more difficult on the point twill side. I probably could have used a floating selvage on that side, but it worked out, it's okay. Um, on the, so that I could enter from the right hand side of the loom, um, your first two threads are one and two. So if you start with one and two down um, and you throw your shuttle, you're good. But if you start on treadle one, your first two threads will be up. So I started on treadle two on three, four. So treadle three. And that meant that one and two were down threads and three and four were up. And then I could enter and that created, and that as long as you keep that pattern, three, four, um, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, through the whole thing, you get this beautiful um, twill salvage and you don't need floating salvages. So that was really fun to learn that and to figure that out and to actually sit at the loom and like figure it out. <laughs> that was really important. So uh, that's my binder. And then all of my original samples are at the back. So uh, this is my, these are my, um, there's three original samples that you have to work out on your own. There's a color effect, a woven pattern effect, and a woven texture. So those were those. And then at the very, very, very back, um, this will be my conclusions and then references and then all of my appendices. And that's it. All that work. This is what I've been working on. This is why there's been no spinning. <laughs> this is why there has been like very, very little spinning all fall. It's because I've been working on this. This has taken probably... I want to say 120 hours, maybe more. So the yarn that I used for this was Briggs and Little Sport. The reason why I'm sharing this all with you and telling you about all of this is because Briggs and Little Sport was the yarn that I used. And now that I'm finished um, with the samples, I feel like I know this yarn inside and out, upside down, right way, like, you know, all, all, the, all the different ways. It's a singles yarn. It's a sport weight yarn. Um, it is 1,790 yards per pound or something like that. We cannot use white, black, or gray in any of our stuff for our unit one. So for your original samples and for your project, you can't use white, black, or gray. However, I wanted to take this, this yarn, I, I'll do my final project, I won't use gray, but I wanted to do another project in this yarn so that I really felt like I kind of brought everything home just for myself. And so I... One of my Christmas presents from Mike that arrived early was, uh, yes, Diane, you're absolutely right, woolen weaving. I've actually been thinking about that because woolen spinning, oh, see, over t we're on a journey right now. And um, I'll just tell you guys this for a sec. We're on a journey right now where I can spin the yarn that I want and I can, I can make the yarn that I want. I can sit down at my wheel and I can spin what I want. Um, and I, I've worked, obviously you guys know, I've worked really, really hard on that. And so now I'm taking you guys along on my journey of learning weaving so that long, so right now I'm kind of pivoting back to working with commercial yarns again to learn, you know, what yarns work, how they act, all that stuff. And then we'll, with the goal and the intention of going, being able to create the yarns that I want to create to be able to weave with. Does that make sense? Um, I don't, I've said this all year. I don't really want to knit a ton more sweaters. There's a few that I would like to have on the needles that I would like to have long-term, but my long-term goal has always been to weave with my hand spun. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're now on that journey. So there's going to be more commercial yarn over the next few years. There's going to be a lot more like deconstructing yarns, figuring them out, getting on the wheel, trying them out and, and, and sort of figuring all that out. Um, and that's really exciting for me. I feel reinvigorated for the first time, um, in a, in a while. I was starting to feel a little bit stagnant, um, through 2020. And I think a lot of it was, was the pandemic, 
we were all stuck at home. Um, we were trying to figure out what to do with the kids. That was very stressful. Um, knowing that James was not in a good situation for him and for his personality. Um, he's so unbelievably soft hearted. Anybody who knows James in real life knows like the first thing that they usually say about him is he's unbelievably gentle. Um, he's very active. He's very busy. He loves Lego. He loves Minecraft, but he's unbelievably soft hearted. And he was just getting trampled at school in these big classes. And so that was really stressful. And now we're, I'm sort of starting to be able to put this stuff forward again. So early Christmas present was Jennifer Moore's book, Double Weave. I have been really enjoying reading this. And what I decided to do, it's really hard right now to get um, Harrisville Shetland for whatever reason. Um, and so I'm substituting. So this is this beautiful log cabin book, uh, a blanket. It's double weave. It is, uh, I think it's 60 inches, 40 inches wide on the loom. So it'll go onto my jack. And I bought enough yarn to do this project as written, which is unusual for me, but that's my gonna be my new normal. It's so that I can learn all this stuff. And uh, I'll show this to you up close on the bigger camera. So that's the log cabin there. And um, she asks you to choose a light and a dark yarn. So of course, what did I do? I picked my two favorite colors because it'll go in our living room. And um, I bought enough yarn. I've got this gorgeous dark charcoal gray. I've got the gold for contrast. It's not really light and dark. Um, this is a darker, this is kind of more of a medium, but I think it'll work really well because they've got contrast. I talked to my mom about it, who's an artist, a painter. She was like, I think it'll be okay. She said, I think it'll actually look like the sample. She said, because the sample isn't really light and dark. It's sort of more a medium and a dark. So she agreed with me and thought that that would work quite well. So that is project number one. Project number two is already on the loom. So I will take some photos of it over the break and you guys will see it uh, in the new year. But I'm working on the uh, cram and dented uh, scarf from Jane Stafford from season three. And then the last thing that I'm working with, I'm going to be working on, and I mapped all of the, these projects out with my weaving mentor, is um, from this book, uh, Next Steps in Weaving. This is some hand spun from years ago. I spun this in like 2015, I want to say. It says 25, 75, 25 BFL in silk. It's from West Coast Color. My good friend, Lynn. I was so proud of this yarn when I finished it, like so proud. I thought I had spun just this beautifully perfect yarn and looking at it now, it's really good, but it's not my best work anymore. And it's been so much fun looking at it and gazing at it and dreaming with it because um, uh, I, I feel like I've come so far with my spinning and it's really fun to go back to these old, old skeins and it's still beautiful yarn. So what I am going to be working on over the Christmas holiday is actually this uh, sample sampler. It's an overshot sampler to start getting into blocks. So um, this is the overshot sampler here. You do a warp. She recommends um, uh, warping 129 ends. Um, you're you're uh, weaving at uh, 20 ends per inch. And so I bought some mercer mercerized cotton to do it in. This is 10-2 cotton, which is ca called for in the pattern. Um, I probably should have gotten two cones. <clears throat> I probably didn't buy enough. This is from Tease Feet as well. Um, but it's just white um, mercerized cotton. And that will be the background for this project. And then the uh, BFL silk, which is sort of the equivalent of a 3-2 cot a three two weight. Um, that's sort of when I did the wraps print and stuff, that was sort of where it, where it came out at. Um, that will be the color for this, uh, for this sampler. And, the, and then I'll have all these sort of samples afterwards. There's a whole bunch that you work through. So I will be learning overshot over the next month or so. So that's it. Pretty cool, eh? So I think there's in total nine samples. Um, there's advancing twill, um, opposites, shadow fashion. You kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, Star of Bethlehem, um, yeah, so that's what I'll be working on. So that's going to go, that was going to go onto the table loom, but I've actually put the crammed and dented scarf on there, and um, this will go, I think this will actually go on the spring. Um, that's what I'm thinking, because I need the, uh, the jack free for my blanket. So I've got quite a few things going on, which is really exciting. I'm really excited about it. I'm really feeling invigorated, so... 
Amanda says the okra and the charcoal are excellent choices. Thank you, Amanda. That means a lot, especially um, with your background and your expertise. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, the blanket's beautiful um, in the in the thing. I believe uh, Harrisville might be having an issue with sourcing. Yes, you're absolutely right, Tori. That's exactly what's going on. Um, there, the mill in Philly has where they get all of their colors from has shut down. So double weave is where you are weaving two layers of cloth at the same time. Uh, great question, Josie. So when you pull, if you weave a 40 inch wide weaving width, when you pull it off, it's 90 inches wide, and it's a whole um, sort of method of weaving. There's lots of different ways of teaching it, lots of different ways of doing it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be learning, learning something like that. Good. Bye Sharon. It was good to see you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, Megan, if you want to do overshot sometime this year, if you have this book, hop on with me and we can do it together. I'll be talking about it on the podcast and we can work through it together. Um, I'll be posting about it as well. So, uh, definitely something to, something to do together. Zan says overshot is my favorite. My guild is starting an overshot friendship coverlet group. Oh, that's what a great, a great idea. And Zan's doing the Star of Bethlehem. Awesome. I'm hoping to do my blocks unit for OHS um, this year. So that's unit five. It's kind of a behemoth um, of, a, of a unit. And so that's actually why I, I thought I'll do the sampler first. And then I can go into blocks with an open mind. And I'm hoping to do my blocks unit at the same time as my finger mani manipulated lace unit. So those two units will kind of go together and I'll hopefully be able to do them through the summer. Lots, lots going on. There's going to be a lot of study over the next few years. I think that you will probably notice that the, the podcast will increasingly become more and more technical um, as I study and as I kind of work my way through all of this. And um, we'll, I'll kind of flush out a lot of my ideas and what I'm working through here on the, on the show. And uh, the blog is going to be resurrected as well because right now I just use the blog for my R RSS feed for the podcast and I don't tend to put a lot of posts in with it, as, um, but I need a way to document some of this stuff. And so the blog is, I've got a whole bunch of posts queued up and ready to go for the new year that I've already started to sort of put together uh, just, to, just to journal and document um, what I'm working on, so... Um, Josie asks, what kind of loom do you need for weaving overshot? Anything you can weave on any loom. Um, you can do overshot is just a type of, it's just one, one, uh, weave structure. So these are all weave structures. Double weave is a weave structure. Overshot is a weave structure. Twill is a weave structure and they all build on one another. So, um, yes, Diane, I've heard really good things about Janet Dawson's overshot class. So definitely something I'll, 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 uh, check out. Okay. Let's see you guys on the other side. Okay, so we are gonna blast through this because I am gonna start losing my voice, which seems to be pretty typical for our Saturday, our Saturday mornings. <clears throat> um, yes, Kathy says you can do overshot on a rigid heddle too. Yeah, you can do it on anything. So luxury fibers this year has been going on throughout the year. I will um, un, I'll, I'll move some of this stuff around in the Ravelry group and just clean it up for the new year. So sort of technically luxury fibers is kind of over. However, um, it's one of those things that, you know, there's lots of fibers out there that are considered luxury and lots of things that we spend all the time that are luxury. So the thread will still be there. Please go ahead and, and continue using it. The, the channel in the Slack channel will still be there. Um, so definitely um, continue to use, um, to, to spin these fibers working through the content that we released throughout this past year. And uh, I'm looking forward to people continuing to share. So this is from Suzanne. This Falkland spin has been relaxing, uh, has been a relaxing way to enjoy spinning during the busy season. I accidentally purchased two braids with slightly different colorways, so I divided each braid into nests and am mixing them by alternating. It seems to work well for the yarn that almost seems semi-solid. Up close, I can see a lot of variation of the pumpkin orange tone with hints of the rose and gold colors uh, coming forward. I still have another four ounces and I should get close to a thousand yards by the end. That is absolutely wonderful, Suzanne beautiful colors. This is from Priscilla. 
beautiful. Again, I've been working on so many Christmas presents that I haven't had time for a lot of spinning, but I did love this braid, so was able to get it spun up. It was interesting to see what it will be. It will be interesting to see what it will look like um, knitted up. Um, although I don't have any plans for it yet. It's 564 yards of two ply fingering and you saw the label there. It's like camel and um, merino and silk. It's just beautiful. Gorgeous. Uh, this is for our natural shades along. So this is something else that's been going on all year. This won't end as, uh, either. We'll just clean up the threads and sort of get it going. And this is just an opportunity to celebrate natural colors. This is from Brittany. I wanted hand knit socks made from my hand spun and I wanted a DK, a three ply and a tough fabric. A while back I shared the finished spin which consisted of fibers I had blended. 50% Wensidale, 35% BFL and 15% mohair. I promised I would share the end result and how they are holding up. They are warm, pretty cozy, lacking in some elasticity, but pretty perfect for my needs. I've worn them in my boots around the house and in bed, and I'd say this is a good blend. Next time, I think I would add some Dorset or some Cheviot for that bounce and maybe some stretch. Yardage wasn't very high here in this worsted spin. One of the things that I really like about knitting yarns is the elasticity and that bounce and that loft. And sometimes you can achieve that with these sort of tougher fibers without actually going whole hog on really hard spun yarn. So um, definitely, definitely something to think about, um, Brittany. You're absolutely right. And you'd get that bounce and that elasticity if you uh, uh, threw in some, some Cheviot or some Dorset. Dorset would be a great choice. Yeah. I've got a Dorset fleece in my, in my stash that I would like to get spun in all of my time um, to uh, eventually use as like a really warm uh, elastic sweater. This is from Philippe. Uh, this is just beautiful yarn. Hi everyone, I've been spindle spinning this natural chocolate brown Corydale. I'm not sure yet uh, if the left cake will remain as a single, so that's the one over here closest to me, um, or if I should wind it double-stranded to ply afterwards, just like the one on the right. Um, any thoughts on this? So I would say, Philippe, do you want to use the yarn all together? Um, in one project and if so I would ply it if not um, and you want to have two different yarns to see kind of how they act and if they're different I would leave it um, and I would love to hear what people think in the in the live chat so definitely read down below and see what people are saying beautiful spinning Philippe this is from Mars I love her photos they're just beautiful uh, Marsh, you always do such a beautiful job with your with your photos. Uh, sharing with my fellow spinners that I designed a heavier weight sock pattern based on the Manx Lochton spots yarn that I spun earlier this year with this group's support. Yeah, we had this whole Manx discussion through the summer that went on and on and on. Um, the pattern is available on Ravelry and on Etsy, and I'll link to the Ravelry pattern in the live chat. And for those who can't use Ravelry, I'm sure we can post the Etsy pattern um, as well. I just don't want to go hunting for it right this minute, but uh, that's just wonderful. And I love these socks. This is from Julie. This is just spindle sample spinning in play. So she posted this and I thought this was so much fun. She's done this beautiful, beautiful work in all of this spinning. Um, Julie says all the sock yarns I've made this season home dyed three and a half pairs knitted will wear them all through the winter to see which breeds hold up best more breeds coming but taking a break for other projects the pink is Texel the green and okra is South Down the purple plum is Cheviot uh, the spring green is Dorset Down and the brown gold is Dorset Horn that'll be really interesting Julie if you could please report back Remember to report back. I'm very curious about which one draw, uh, uh, wears really the best. This is from Deb. Uh, this is for weaving. Uh, these two braids were sent to me as part of a sweet love bomb package that when we lost my stepson, I'm sorry for your loss, Debbie. I had lots of feelings about everything to do with spinning then, them. They were not my colors, the emotion that came with the reason I had them, but in the end, I am in love with them. I'm going to weave a scarf. Beautiful, and I'm excited to see how it turns out, so please post it, Debbie, and we'll be thinking about you. This is from Barb. I thought this was so sweet. This is a new experiment. So she wove a cotton huck structure, so that's the, the, the fabric, the, the base fabric, um, and then she took a drawing by her daughter, and she embroidered it on the fabric. Isn't that fantastic? 
um, used a soluble print of the drawing to guide my embroidery. I like it and I have another woven fabric to try one of her other drawings. Isn't that beautiful? Love this. I do love the colors too, that's part of it. And last but certainly not least, this is from Alex. I love this so much. I saw these and I had to share them because Alex has said that she's been quiet lately, although she's here today in the live chat, which is so good. Um, but she's popping in to share these tea towels that she made on her rigid heddle. It's fantastic. They look amazing. I'm always um, really pleased to share stuff that people are making on their rigid heddles because I think rigid heddle weaving um, gets kind of a bad rap that you can't do everything. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it's one of those things that, you know, you can do a lot and, uh, it's, it's really, um, uh, in the, you just have to figure it out and work it out. And people like Liz Gibson are really doing a great job at helping people to really explore the possibilities of their rigid heddles. And, uh, this is just another example, beautiful, beautiful rainbow. So thank you, Alex, for sharing that. So thank you everybody for being here today. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season, regardless of what you uh, celebrate. Have a wonderful new year. I hope that new year reigns in um, well for you, that you're happy, healthy, that those around you are happy and healthy. And I will see you in early January. And until then, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy weaving. And I hope that you guys um, are share lots of photos of what you're working on and we can do a, a catch up on our, on our first January episode of what you guys are working on. I would love to see what you're most proud of from the year. If you guys could post that, that would be lovely and wonderful. And let us know uh, what, what, why it was such a wonderful project and, and what about it was, was so great. Um, I will post a thread in Ravelry for you guys to share those. So please, uh, please take the time to share what you were most proud of from the year. If you don't use Ravelry, just send me a message or tag me on Slack if you're in the Slack channel. So until next year, have a, it's so weird to say until next year, have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will see you on the other side. Thank you so much everyone. And thank you for being here this morning. Bye everyone.